Hey guys, how's it going? JJ Wilson here. And for this message, I'm going to want to talk about the anime I've been watching. It's now, and now it's over. Um, it was presented on Netflix. It's the second part of the anime called King and Ashura. And I have to say, this, this anime was truly fantastic. Um, <laughs> there's not too much bad stuff I can really say about it. I mean, I guess if you're not into martial arts and stuff like that, then it probably wouldn't appeal to you as much. But for me, uh, it definitely, it definitely uh, satisfied me to the point where it, it it really has me anticipating for a third season. I mean, it truly is like. I guess following up, I know I remember did a video a while back. It's been a, it's been some time since I made a video, in the beginning of it, uh, what my impressions were on this anime so far. And um, I know I mentioned probably the origins of it, so I won't I won't go into detail about that. You'll probably have to go back through the channel and do my old videos and watch that. But either way, like, man, it, it really has me anticipating for more because I'm glad they did the very last fight with Oma and Ryan, Ryan Curry, the crazy joker from the Curry family. I'm glad they did end it off on that note as far as the, 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 se the season's end. And um, it has me anticipate, like I said, it has me anticipating for more battles to come. Now that fight with Oma and, and Ryan, that wasn't particularly my most favorite fight. But uh, it was sy symbolic in the sense that Tokita, Oma Tokita, he finally, he finally uh, developed his own style. His own style, the Nico style, which was uh, taught to him by his master, Nico Tokita. And man, I... It has me wondering, like, how did Nico lose? Because even when Oma was training in his head, uh, there's a part in, in this second half of the season where he's training. And it's almost like, it's almost realistic, but he's like sleeping, training or whatever. It's crazy. But anyway, he's training and Nico comes in and, and just owns dude. Even when Oma reached into his advance, which is one of those, uh, like a secret technique that's forbidden. And now you get to learn why it's forbidden, you know, due to Oma's health and all that. You get to learn why if you watch it. But man, even in that form, the advanced form, he he just owns Oma. <laughs> like, easy. Just straight manhandle him, man. It, it was nuts. Even in that little sequence. And it's like, it, it just all throughout that series, I'm, I'm thinking, how did Nico lose? Now, at the beginning, the first half of the, of the series... It was implied that he died while fighting the sensei of Kiryu Setsuna. I, hope, I think I said his name right. Or Kiryu Setsuna. So he died by that guy, supposedly. And then in turn, when uh, Kiryu got older and stronger, he ended up beating his own master. He killed him. And so that's why they, Kiryu is so obsessed with Oma because he, he seen him as a kid and he knew how strong he was. And he wanted to see how much more he developed and all that stuff. So they got this, they got a beef going on, you know, and even, and it was at first it looked like Oma was going to get in this event for revenge, but it turns out he only wanted to, he only cared about being the best there there is out there, you know, to beat all the foes that were standing against him. So he didn't really care about revenge, but it still bothered him after all those years as to why Nico died. And so, you know, he comes to grips with that. You know, once Nico tells him, hey, you need to develop your own style. You need to have faith in your ability and that type of deal. So, so I, I know I kind of spoiled that part with, with that fight with Ryan, but that's basically how the, he was able to stop him. But yeah, um, it, it was a lot of good fights in there, man, from um, the fights with Cosmo Imai and uh, freaking uh, the Muay Thai fighter that could punch really fast, uh, Galon. And you also had uh, it was a lot more fights. The the sumo wrestler going up against uh, Seki Bayashi. You also had um, what was the other one? The doctor. <laughs> that was the funniest. It wasn't that funny, but it was crazy. Like he was fighting that prisoner dude, Bondo. Yeah, his uh, I think that's his first name. I can't quite remember. All these names are in Japanese, just about. But uh, the doctor dude, man, he. He did some crazy stuff to where he he couldn't even feel pain. Like he took all these painkillers. He had all these surgeries to where he couldn't feel no pain. You know, intercepting in his brain. It was it was nuts. So he he's breaking limbs, but he's still fighting. Like it ain't nothing. <laughs> it's just so crazy. 
But even off off those fights, even off those fights, there was a lot of drama going on, especially with uh, Yamashito. I mean, not Yamashito, Yamashita, Kenzo. A lot going on with Kenzo and involving his son because you get to find out what his son's been doing even in the first half of the season. Like, he's just, he's making all these secret deals and uh, he, he's got companies under his wing and he's telling them what to do and all that stuff. And then, you know, word gets out to the Kura family, they don't appreciate that and they dang, they damn near kill him. <laughs> I mean, that was, that was great right there too. That was a good little sidetrack from all the, the events going on in the arena. But yeah, overall, man, y'all definitely need to check this out when you can. You really do. Um, yeah, you, you guys really should check out King in the Shirt when, when you get a chance. Like, I have to say, this is probably... Yeah, this is probably going to be the third best anime of the year for me. So I got my top three pretty easily for 2019 already. With uh, Villain Saga, Dororo, and now King in the Shirt. Now that that's over, now I'm done watching it. So that that pretty much rounds up the top three. Uh, I guess if it wasn't so fighting centric, then yeah, King and Ashura probably would be my my top one. But uh, because Vinland Saga has such a really good story going on, it's kind of hard to put that over Vinland Saga right now. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be all for. If you got any more questions, I can tell you guys in the comments and everything about the anime. If you want to learn more, it just it was just so much going on, but it. The, the way they told each fighter style and their and their uh, pros and cons and their fighting style and their abilities, it, it was so well put together. I got to give Yabako, who's the maker of this anime, a lot of credit for his research and his expertise in martial arts. I, I really do. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. But anyway, that's going to be all from here. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know on the comment section. And no, I've not read the manga. Uh... I'm probably going to keep myself from reading the manga unless I get tired of waiting for like a season two to come in. But anyway, that's going to be it. I'll see you guys later.